Hey guys, Philip Latrade, Genius here, and welcome to another crypto update for Tuesday, August 8th. So on this edition, I wanted to go over the fact that today, August 8th, is SegWit lock-in. Now, if you recall, leading up to August 1st, there was, um, you know, the Bitcoin Civil War. Uh, you know, were we going to get SegWit or is it going to break off? And it really came down to what the miners and the other people running nodes, you know, what were they signaling? Were they going to signal SegWit or not? Um, so they ended up signaling SegWit, and actually that happened early. So August first really, you know, didn't really uh, amount to much. Um, the user activated fork BIP one forty eight uh, that did um, basically activate, but it was redundant for BIP ninety one. So you might say that the user activated fork guys played chess well, and the miners, you know, didn't want dis disruption, uh, and so. They went ahead and, and basically SegWit was agreed upon to, to start signaling. Now, the next part of this is the SegWit lock-in period. So they all agreed to signal. So now we're in uh, the lock-in period 19. Okay. I'm sorry, 20. And that uh, ends actually technically tomorrow. However, if there are 95% of the blocks mined or signaling SegWit, SegWit locks. Okay, so that means that on the next difficulty period, we start getting SegWit blocks. The, the, the network, the Bitcoin blockchain will, will mine SegWit blocks, segregated witness blocks. So what that means is if we look at, um, this is a site I've shared with you guys before, xbt.eu. If we take a look at that, you're going to see that um, here we have 47 blocks needed for a lock-in. Here is where we're at. Um, so basically at this point we're looking at based on the math and 10 minute blocks roughly <clears throat> we're going to be locked in at 1844 GMT which I think that roughly translates into for about 2 p.m. this afternoon Eastern time and then uh, and it's locked so if you look at all the blocks that have been mined they're all signaling SegWit uh, so at this point it's just a formality uh, it will lock then once it locks um, we're gonna have another uh, difficulty period which is gonna be a grace period and uh, approximately August 23rd we will have this the network the blockchain uh, will start mining segment blocks. so uh, what does that mean for price I think we saw uh, an, uh, you know basically money flowing back into to Bitcoin after the August 1st thing seemed to be, um, you know, a non-issue. Uh, once we saw Bitcoin Cash, which was the forked, basically an altcoin, Chinese altcoin. And once that forked, uh, it got pretty much dumped right away. And we're going to get to that too in a little bit. But um, once that seemed to have transpired, money flew right back into Bitcoin and boom, we were making, all, you know, all-time highs. With that being said, let's take a look at some charts and um, we'll start off with Bitcoin. So basically what we have here is, um, you know, this is kind of an ascending wedge and ascending wedges tend to break down. Uh, as you can see also too, we are in kind of an up channel. So even if that did break down, I would I would suspect that this, this channel that we have formed here would hold. Um, you know, we may see some positive price action that breaks through this upper part of this channel because once SegWit locks, you know, maybe more money comes in off of the sideline. Don't know, but that's a certainly a possibility. Now, if you look over in the daily chart, we're just about ready to complete a major swing trade. This was this capit capitulation move here, uh, and we bottomed out at about 1780. So the FIB extension for that move is 35, 34, 60 as measured by Coinbase's index. So, uh, and we are about 80 bucks away from that target. <clears throat> so, um, kind of expect that to to get tagged. Um, now, we are toppy on the daily, um, both in Stochastics and RSI. Um, they are pretty toppy. Um, haven't seen any, you know, sometimes what we get is bearish divergence like we have here, and that got really toppy there. Um, that's that's a strong divergence and uh, 
hit 3,000, and that's kind of when all the segwit worries started kicking in. Um, in this situation, we've got both the Stoke pretty high and the RSI pretty high oversold. Now, not that it's going to roll over here, but it could. If we look over on the hourly chart, we actually do see that we're actually set, technically setting up more for a buy. RSI isn't really um, oversold, but the stocks are kind of looking like a, a buy spot. If you look over here, um, in this situation here, um, set up for a nice buy, a dip down here, which translated to a move up here, and so we're at another dip. Now you can't get into an embedded condition where like here, and you're like thinking, oh, it's gonna bounce here, and it doesn't, it moves down more. Um, but one thing I'd like to point out is the WMA uh, moving averages 20. You know, if it's hugging the 20, I, that to me, that's the momentum trade and uh, a significant break below that. And then we look at this uh, longer WMA 65, which I like to use, and that kind of, um, kind of provides support price-wise, usually on an uptrend to stay intact. So that's what we're looking at Bitcoin. Again, I think from the news today of SegWit locking in officially, I think we might see a bump. Now, you it could be a sell the news event too that happens. And then, and then there's, because uh, there's definitely on the daily um, enough technical reasons to see a pullback here. But um, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, as far as Ethereum goes, Ethereum is pretty strong here. I was actually concerned. I drew a line here because there was a bearish divergence and we were in an ascending wedge two things that uh, don't technically add up to a, a positive bullish result. However, it has broken out, has broken above this trend line here. So that kind of, this gets nullified. And uh, this obviously now is not a ascending wedge, uh, looking more like, um, it still kind of is, but it could turn into a channel, which if, if price moves up more, then, uh, you know, this will turn into a channel. So, um, <clears throat> The target for this move here is 285.57. I kind of assumed that if this we broke out of this uh, down move and we did put in a nice base and higher, I was thinking psychological level would be about 300 is where this move would take us. So, you know, if we hit 285, um, might take a little breather there because Fib targets usually are a point where there's some consolidation or a pullback. But uh, I think 300 is uh, definitely in sight. Now, if we break above this 311 area um, cleanly, then, you know, that's the last of the bearish fib. Otherwise, the, the target, the downside target here would be still in play, believe it or not, 6071. Uh, for that to get nullified, though, would be a move above, um, above this fib zone. And uh, at that point, then you're looking at all-time highs again. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, ICOs, as you know, as the money, um, as they fire up and money goes into the ICOs, um, you might see a run up in ETH. And then as the money, as the ICOs release and people want to, you know, flip them, um, you might see, uh, you know, there's a, there's a sloshing effect with the, with Ethereum and ICOs. And so that's, that's kind of the negative knock right now on, on, on ICOs and Ethereum pricing. But so Ethereum pricing will be, um, up and down to be expected for sure. More so than the other ones I would imagine. Um, Litecoin, uh, again, it's all about this channel. I still am expecting this channel to move to go up. Right now, we are looking at cycling down into a buy on the 30 minute daily kind of toppy. Um, and you can see when we get these peaks on the MACD on the daily, um, we do tend to see a topping and a pullback. Um, the order of magnitude on this move hasn't been that much. Um, so we'll see. But uh, we could see another slight pullback to this trend line and then another move higher. But I, I am a, I'm expecting this channel to maintain. I really am. Um, Bitcoin Cash, the Chinese clone. So basically what happened here was, I think, you know, if you look at the volume histogram here um, or the volume profile. So basically what we have is you can see this you know this is volume by price level you can see a lot of volume came in here below this you know um, point 10 area also was a, a support resistance line that we came up hit pulled back and came up and just hit again you can see we um, didn't quite make a new high here but it is consolidating and actually this next fib measure move would take us to point 11 um, 
here's what I say. We get above 0.12. There is not a whole lot of a volume established in these price ranges. This is when it was just on the exchanges that had uh, Bitcoin Cash allocated to those who had coin on the exchange, such as Bitrix uh, and Bitfinex. Uh, but at this point, you couldn't have uh, moved coin. And then when the deposits opened up, that's when you started seeing the sell pressure. And then it really uh, started dumping a lot of volume here from uh, below 12 down on to 06, where it kind of um, tapered off. So probably what we have is some people that decided not to dump at these levels, waiting for it to come back higher. Um, again, the big uh, fib zone here would be between 16 and 18. So do I think it gets there? Yeah, I think if it breaks above 12, you actually might see a quick, um, a fairly decent sized move. Um, the Chinese market, the veracity of the Chinese market should not be underestimated. So. And then one last thing uh, would be an altcoin Digibyte. Um, you know, the thing about Digibyte is it has a lot of activity. It is a, it is one of the, the trader favorite altcoins. Um, you know, right now we're in a, in a wedge or a, a pennant. And um, basically what we're seeing here on the four hour is definitely getting into spots where we should see a bounce here pretty soon. Also on the daily. So... Pretty decent sell pressure on this leg down. However, you know, as you can see, when we get to these uh, points here on the MACD, we get a pretty good bounce. So, yeah, I would expect to bounce back up, test this upper trend line here pretty soon. And uh, do like it for the upside potential. You know, you could be looking at close to a triple 300% uh, move uh, back into the uh, bearish FIB zone from this low to high. And uh, month of August should be very bullish for crypto. I think SegWit being, um, you know, not an issue anymore. I think that's going to play a, a big part. So that's your crypto update for Tuesday, August 8th. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Take care, guys. Bye.